She lies about her name, but I don't care. If I wanted to find out, I could. Heels that high are never without a paper trail. But as long as she pays me that same cash, she can sign her name Norma Desmond for all I care. She tells me a story about something missing. See, that's what I do. I find things, things missing, things lost, things stolen. Or in this particular case, a specific thing that has run away. Her identical twin sister. The conversation gets heated as the woman's voice of reproach is heard the loudest. She thinks her sister is absconded to some far off land. It's probably not the case. She's just scared and feels left alone. Long story short, they never separated from birth until now. They weren't just identical twins, but conjoined as well. I'm not sold on her tall tale, but I'll take her money anyway. Where you been, man? I haven't seen you in a while. What have you been up to? You been all right? You been good? So, it's been like, what, four years or so? Man, you been doing okay. I never made any allusion to the fact that they wanted to come for me. Sometimes freedom is only skin deep. It was only a matter of time and instead of feeding into my paranoia and letting it cripple me, I chose to live instead. I chose to make friends and to fall in love. But even with all this, something felt missing. That was only half of a hole. Now, without a beating heart, I can never feel warmth. The only sensation that has become a parody of it. It's haunting. I believe now that to understand human life, you have to first experience death.
was never my intention to spend the rest of my life searching. But when something is taken, life's natural recourse is to correct itself. So many are apathetic now, their life without meaning. But I do not wander without aim. I'm constantly exhausted because I constantly search. I find no solace in wasted sleep. Subtle indications let me know I'm on the deserved path. As the earth fights to find itself, I fight to find myself as well. A knock at the door pushes me back to reality, and for a second I wonder how I got in this hotel in the first place. The walk to the door felt more like a walk down death row. I hear a woman's voice on the other side, and I start to feel like I'm in one of my own stories. For some reason I'm scared to turn the handle. Like the only thing keeping a sea of water from gushing in like a flood and drowning me is the two-inch melamine door. The woman tells me she's my wife, that a friend bumped into me earlier and told her I was staying here. She says she's confused, which means I'm totally lost. She tells me about Rose, our daughter, and how it's not too late, and I'll admit something clicks, giving me enough courage to look through the people. She looked oddly familiar, but more like I'd seen her in a dream once. Maybe I'm losing it. Maybe my mind went so far into these stories that it couldn't find its way out. And now it's adrift at sea. But it's not a sea. It's an ocean. <laughs>